nothing but slow jams Coming through the speakers right now And Dora right got you heated right now What's up, everybody? This is Slow Dance for Life, and we're back again with another episode of Love and R&B. And today I have a wonderful guest with me who goes by the name of Grace Weber. How you doing, Grace? Hey, hey, hey. I'm great. I'm excited. It's going to be fun. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Thanks for joining. For those of you who don't know, you're living under a rock. Grace, actually an artist, singer, songwriter, and she's very dope. I've been following her for a minute now. And I've been posting her on the page. So if you follow the page, you're probably familiar with her. But she's here to be on this show. And I'm going to tap into her head a little bit. But before I get into that, I do have a new single that just dropped today called Intimate. And it's very dope. You should check it out. We'll talk about that more later. But I just wanted to get that out the way. My name is Grace Weber. And I'm 35. I just turned 35 like last week, which is really weird to me. Oh, happy belated. Happy belated Thank birthday. You. And I'm originally from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, but I live in um, LA now. Do you get bad when people say Wisconsin? Wisconsin, yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> Funny thing is, I was just there like a week ago and my I started saying my O's like Wisconsin. It's like, um, oh, how you doing? And I was like, no, 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 no. Like, I can't have my Wisconsin accent come back. But uh, uh-huh. luckily, I left and now I'm back to not Wisconsin. All right, cool. <laughs> Even though um, I love my hometown, I love Milwaukee. My family's there. I run a music program for kids there. So Milwaukee is like always my roots. Yeah. So, so now before I get into these questions, sometimes on my page, I get a little spicy, do things that shakes the table a little bit. So if I ask you any questions that you don't want to answer, this is the code word. Just say "wizzy wow," and then I'll just go to the next question. I like that code word. Right? Because I don't. Wow. Yeah, I don't want to get nobody in trouble. So, and I know you got ties, and yeah. So, first question I'll start off with is: When did you fall in love with R and B? Honestly, like from my youth, <laughs> like Boys to Men was my first concert when I was eight, and that was like my favorite band like just the sound of their voices and the harmonies and just like how soulful it was was so amazing to me it was like like the epitome of singing was boys to men mariah carey you know whitney houston who obviously leans they lean a little more pop but um i actually grew up singing in a gospel choir and so to me like r&b that leaned in that gospel world was always just what i loved and just you know where my heart live i remember listening to mariah carey and like trying to get every run that she was doing i would like slow it down like okay she's doing like da, 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 da. and i was like okay let me just figure out how to do that so mariah voice men they were like my voice teachers i guess growing up dope that's a good first concert to go to voice to man oh yeah. yeah like i remember going there with my friend and just being like I can't believe I'm here. And it was funny too, because like they were, you know, getting really like sexual on stage and like, you know, taking their shirts up and stuff. And like at eight, I remember kind of being like, oh, that's (laughs) what that song's about. Okay. (laughs) Like sort of like putting two and two together, like I'll make love to you. (laughs) And being like, oh, this is like sexual. That's (laughs) funny. Like love. So it was like a little bit like, you know, shocking in a way at eight but also like you know okay we're learning we're learning this now i don't think i went to my first concert till i was like over 18 so oh yeah yeah that's pretty interesting yeah cool yeah next question i have who's your current favorite artist Mm, i have a few i'm super into lucky day right Mm. now i really love his production i really love his singing and his lyrics i actually wrote this song intimate that i released today with dab who's like one of lucky day's main co-writers and sort of like creative collaborators um i also love yeba like she's incredible i met her like four years ago now maybe five years ago when um we were all working on chance's album coloring book and I remember listening to her and Peter Collins like singing in the stairwell at the studio and just being like, what the, f- can I swear on this show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> like their voices were so free and like so emotional and just 
unconstrained. It was just amazing. Um, and then who else am I loving? I'm, oh, that song, I'm not, I don't know his name. I'm like forgetting it, but These Four Walls. I don't know if you know that song These, that just dropped. It? He was, he, I think he's from, actually, I was going to say the UK, but I don't think so. I can't remember his name, but I've been hearing this song everywhere and just being like, ooh, what is that? And the Victoria Monet, I love. Like, mm. ass like that, I literally, it's in my head every time I'm in the gym. It's like, how you get that ass like that? And um, I get, like, inspired. <laughs> That's but, so uh, funny because my girlfriend loves that song, too. She always plays it. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. so good. And Moment, like, and her new project's crazy. Like, she just seems like a nice, good person. Like, she, I just, I'm a fan. Yeah. Okay, so tell me about Yeba. I'm not really too tapped in. I always see people post Yeba's Heartbreak. But for somebody who's not familiar like me, what would be a couple of songs that you would tell them to listen to to make them a fan? Um, Distance is beautiful. My Mind is kind of like what blew her up. Like that was sort of the song that she performed on, uh, what was it? So Far Sounds. Okay. And uh, that was like the moment where everyone just saw like, oh, her voice. And, and really like how free and like willing she is to like put it all on the table. Like she's super raw and like super vulnerable. And I think it's just cool to see someone who's like willing to tell the stories that she tells about her life. And like, she's gone through a lot, you know, like her mom passed away kind of right when she started popping off. Um, but yeah, so I'd say distance, my mind. There's one other one that I'm in love with, but I can't. Oh, um, Paranoia Purple. That's the one that like everyone freaks out too about. Yeah. It's just very, very soulful, just so real. It's just yeah, she's her voice is crazy. She just yeah. she goes she goes crazy. I'm gonna have to check her out. I don't know why I haven't, but like a lot of people rave about her. But I'm gonna have to check. She her. leans like almost more into I don't know like soul. She's a little bit like genreless. Like I wouldn't say she's like super like R and B. But she's very, I don't know, just soulful. Is she her voice is very like gospel vibes yeah. too. Like she grew up in church and she actually sings on PJ Morton's when he did the cover of I should know this because I sang this on tour with him. I like saying Yeva's part. Uh mm -hmm. I believe in you. Uh I can't think of the song, but PJ does this cover of this song, and then Yeba did this like verse that's like iconic just like the choices that she made and the melodies and but yeah definitely okay. check her out i think you'll like her okay for sure i like when people can put me on to new music and new songs so i'm gonna definitely yeah. check her out all right cool. all right <laughs> give me your top three well not top three but your three favorite non-skip r&b albums Ooh, non-skip uh definitely Boys to Men, I like can't think of what the name of the, their first album is right now, but their first project was the definitely first. like, what is, what is the name of their first project? I'm about is to that the Cooley? I think, is that Cooley High? Okay, so not Cooley High, but two, Boys to Men 2. Okay, yeah. Like that one was like everything for me. Mm. I really love A Lucky Day again, the Painted album, like the one with... um smoke some more i think that's i think that's what's on there was amazing to me and then probably yeba's project again not to like be like <laughs> you know <laughs> going crazy but, um yeba's album is called what was it called let see i'm like really bad with album titles as you can yeah. <laughs> tell but i know like songs that then i'm like what was the name of the album dawn dawn John is the name of the album. Yeah. Okay. And Don't. yeah, I think those are, what are your non-skip albums? Oh, I, I have a lot. I have a lot of questions. <laughs> I, I have a lot. So the one that comes to mind, Maxwell, Urban Hangs, mm. Mary J. Blige, My Life. I was just thinking about this yesterday. Who else? I, I mean, I have so many. Um, I'm going to get mad if I don't say one of my favorites. I know. It's funny. I feel like I'm like, like trying to pull, I'm like, what was the name of the album? Like, which is kind of like, I feel like the name of an album is so iconic. You know what I mean? Like it, it's like the choice that people made to like, this is what the title of the album is. So now I'm mad at myself as an artist yeah. for not like pulling the album title. 
Nah, it happens. But yeah, definitely some great albums. I'll check out Yeah, but I haven't heard it, but I'm assuming it's great if you recommend it. So. Yeah, I'm like going hard right now. Right, <laughs> I'm sure, like, yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. Butterfly, yeah. Mariah Carey. Can you call him? Um, is Mariah's like R&B, uh, right? Like, yeah, she's like yeah. pop-ish sometimes too, but definitely, yeah, that album. I actually was listening to this concert that she did in Tokyo in like 1994 or something when I was on a plane ride. Randomly, I was like searching through what to watch. And one of the options was like, Mariah Carey, first time playing in Tokyo, whatever. And I was like, ooh, I'm gonna watch this. And it had like motion, it had um, Once We Day, just like all of her hits. And she sounded so good. And the crazy thing to me is like, her and the band didn't have in-ears. Like no, people didn't listen with in ears a lot in the 90s, which like as a singer is crazy because she was singing in this like huge stadium, like probably 100,000 people or whatever. Like it was crazy. And she's singing with these like, little monitors on stage. And I'm like, damn, like if she can sing this without even like having in ears or like maybe not hear, hearing her like the best, it's like raised the bar for me as a singer where I was like, okay. I need to practice more. I need to like get to that standard of what Mariah could do at that point. Because I feel like now, not that I like, I don't think auto tune is bad necessarily. I try to like not use it as much as I can just because I like the more like raw sound or whatever. But it was interesting to me to see singers in the 90s not using auto tune at all. Like Boys to Men 2 was, I watched their concert and I was like, wow, like this singing is just like, you know, I don't want to get like lazy with like leaning on auto-tune or like, and again, like I'm not hating on auto-tune. Like I use yeah. it on songs sometimes or whatever, but I don't know. It just set the bar for me in a new way. So yeah, that was my little detour into. Yeah. Can you explain, Mariah. Um, can you explain the process of in-ears for someone like me, I'm not a singer, but when I go to concerts, I see some have it. Can you explain what that's for and what that does when you don't have it versus when you do have it? So like when you're on a stage, you can either like hear yourself through like on stage monitors, because if you're on stage, a lot of the times like the speakers are in front of you, you can't necessarily hear what the audience is hearing. Sometimes you can, if it's like reverberant in the room or like if it's a smaller room or bigger room, I guess sometimes too, but often you can't really hear the the music when you're behind the speakers. And like, because a lot of the sound is coming through like aux chords. So like the keyboard is like electronic keyboard. And so you can't hear it unless you hear it coming through speakers, just as like an example. And sometimes like the drums will be loud on stage because they're like right behind you. And so you can't necessarily hear your voice like as well as you want to. So on stage monitors, like put the sound, you know, projected at you like you'll see them at the bottom of the stage but in ears like put it right in your ear so like it's just like listening on headphones or whatever like you can hear everything clearer oh, okay. and especially like when i sing the national anthem the echo is like so bad or so crazy like that you can't it's so hard to sing the anthem without in ears because it'll be like Oh, say can you see? And then I would not even be able to hear that because it's so like big and loud in there. I would hear when I'm on the next line, I would hear, oh, say can you see? And it would like throw wow. me off like crazy. So when you have in ears in, it like blocks everything out. So you're literally like, you can't hear anything else except for like what's coming in the mic and what's coming through the cord. So when you're not on in ears, especially in like a big stadium, I don't know. It's just crazy because it's like the drummer wasn't even on in ears, and to keep the tempo and stuff, it's just really hard mm -hmm. <laughs> to sing like that without in ears. And yeah, it's like singing with headphones versus singing on speakers, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for the explanation. Like I always see because I'm not a singer, but I, I see like sometimes they'll be singing and then they'll take it out, and then so I just always wonder like what's going on. And I'm sure yeah, sometimes you like take it out if it's like it's like too loud or like. Cause you can hear yourself as a singer better sometimes when you have one ear in and one ear out. And so if you're feeling like, Oh, I can't really like hear myself. Like you'll like rip it out kind of. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for explaining that. I'm yeah. I hope that was, that made sense. <laughs> no, nah, it did. It definitely helped me a lot. And like I said, I'd be wanting to ask questions sometimes for myself because I always be wondering, especially now since I'm like going to concerts more. So nice to know. Yeah. So thanks.
what's an R&B song or artist that someone put you onto that you're forever thankful mm. for? Ooh. Um, I guess PJ Morton was one that my band put me onto. Alvin, my drummer, he grew up in New Orleans. He still lives there. And PJ Morton grew up in New Orleans and is from there. And I remember him just like bringing up PJ and I was like, ooh, like, again, as a singer, like the choices that he makes melodically were just really inspiring to me. And again, he has like a very gospel sound and I think his dad is a pastor. I'm not for sure about that, but um, just musically, like the choices that he makes and the instrumentation and just like the backgrounds, the harmonies, and also like the way he does live shows, the arrangements are crazy. So I'd say that and then... Maybe Jamila Woods actually was someone like from Chicago who is again like a little bit less like traditional R and B. I don't like, know what genre she like really falls in, but like lyrically, she really inspired me and kind of pushed me to think about my lyrics in like a more poetic way. So yeah, I say those two people that I didn't know initially and was put onto. PJ Martin, he's came up quite a bit in me doing this, so a lot of people. Or tapped in. I'm not really too tapped in with his whole work, but I got to check him out and really dive into him. So, yeah. How Deep yeah. Is Your Love? That's a song that I forgot. That's what PJ did. How Deep okay. Is Your Love and Yeba. And like, it's live and you'll, yeah. James Vickery is another one from oh, London. Yeah, I, like, I like him. Yeah. yeah. He, um, I think my manager, my manager put me onto him and I got to work with him in London in January and he's, amazing and he's also just again like the nicest dude he's really funny and he's actually on my album because i was of gonna song. say i was gonna say do you guys have any songs together that's dope yeah, yeah it's like an amazing song i'm excited oh can't wait to hear honestly like a lot of 90s r&b inspired me a lot for this project i sent my mixing engineer when the water water runs dry was like a song that i was like i want to make sure that for my mixes we're not going too modern, like too compressed. Like we're still pulling from this R&B sound, not on, only in some of the production, but like literally in the mixing of like the way that the vocals were very raw and like emotional. They were very dynamic too. Like you could hear the highs and the lows and like it wasn't all too much um, of the same level. So I'd say those, I know, I know you said one song <laughs> and I just throw you like... A no, bunch I, of songs, but those are artists that I that I did send songs to, like to be like, this is the direction that I want for the album. What's the hardest part about being an upcoming artist? Trying to like stand out in the sea of so many artists, like trying to get put on. I would say, especially like independently, it's hard because our budgets are small, and so it's this process of like, okay, where should we spend? the money, you know, exactly. I always want to put it creatively. And so does my team, but like definitely my team. But there's always these questions of like, oh, should we make a music video for this song and then like push it and hope that it organically gains traction, like through your page, who you've been so supportive of me, which has been huge. I want people to know, like when they post stuff, like it means the world to me because it's like, okay, this is another chance for people to see what I'm doing. But you know, you wonder like, okay, should we save money to push the YouTube video out? Like kind of just those decisions, those like business decisions of like, how do you promote yourself to stand out in this world? And because even like artists who are signed, you know, they're trying to stand out too. Like there's so much information that's coming at us all the time. And I just feel like, how do I get people to hear my music? Because I feel like if they hear it, you know, I can hit that tipping point of like the fan base that I'm looking for. But if I can't reach people, it's like, how do I get out there? So I think that would be like the the hardest part is just standing out in, and like social media. <laughs> like I have a hard time. I love Instagram and I'm actually really loving threads, but I've never been super good at TikTok or Twitter. And so it's kind of hard for me to like try to figure out how to get good at that when I feel really like it does not come to be naturally and I don't like it. And so yeah. that's tough. I wish there was more platforms out here that were helping upcoming artists. I don't think there's really many pages out there that show love to the, the artists out here that's currently putting out R&B music. So that's yeah. why with my page, 
I try to always show love. Like, yeah, I throw in the throwbacks. My main thing that I like to do is support the new R&B because that's the future. You can either complain about it or you can do something to help advance it. So I came across your music and I think I, the Spotify algorithm put me onto your music. Hmm, Sometimes I I'll just that. be, yeah, I'll just be, you know, listening to music and it'll say so-and-so sounds similar to this artist and I'll go through all the artists and I came across your music and I think the first song I saw was featuring Chance. I'm like, wait, she has yeah. a, song, a rapper? I'm like, oh, girl, <laughs> like Chance knows her, but I don't know her. So I'm like, wait, I'm behind. So I listened into a bunch of your songs. I was like, she's really dope. Like, I can't believe she's not really talked about. So from then on, I was like, oh, can't wait to post her on my page. So Yay. And then, I appreciate like, with, it. Yeah, yeah. And then with, with each release, I'm just like, oh, it's going to get better and better. And I know like sometimes you'll send me music early. I've never been in a position where I'm like, oh, I got to lie and tell them I like it. But yeah. like usually when they send me stuff, it's always good. So I'm like, yes. Like, especially when you send me stuff. So good. No, that makes me happy. And honestly, like I like that on your page, sometimes you'll put like, you know, what do you guys think? Like, do you yeah. like this or not? And it's, I, I like seeing what people's like real reactions are. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I really want to know if people are into it or not, because that's something too. like when I get in my head sometimes or it's like, oh, like, how do I break through? You know, you start thinking, like, is it that some of the songs aren't like translating or something? And I get, you know, so many messages from people who are like, I love this. I love this. And so sometimes I'm like, I want to know. I mean, that's just like when I was on Spiritual Word or like they have the range and stuff like that. It's kind of fun. I don't know if fun's the right word, <laughs> but yeah. I get like a ton of amazing comments and then some people will be like i'm not feeling this <laughs> and it's like yeah. okay okay cool yeah. like i like to see i like to see both sides of it because it's just More it's real to me i guess yeah i can just say for me i think you're dope i don't just throw that out there it's only a matter of time before the rest of the world takes notice and you know sometimes it'd be like that like even with my page like i feel like my page is super dope but i don't feel like it necessarily gets a love like doing this is when i get my flowers from people like oh you know I appreciate your page and stuff like that, but yeah. So I love your page. That's why I send you stuff early. Cause actually I meant to send you intimate early. I, I have this like list of people that I was like trying to email it out to and you were like top of the list. And then we yeah. just, we dropped well, no, it I, I appreciate, yeah. yeah, I appreciate it. And, and another thing I wanted to say on here a while ago, you sent me an email inviting me to your video, your video shoot for, I think it was the lonely video if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I just want to say like that meant a lot to me because for somebody who's doing this and this wasn't like a, a career path for me, I just made this page because I love R&B and doing this page, I've started meeting people and, you know, building a rapport with these artists and producers. So like gestures like that, it gives me the confidence and it lets me know like, okay, this is a space where you can exist and they actually value what you bring. So when you send me that invite, even though I didn't make it to the shoe because I was going out of town. It meant a lot because I'm like, wow, she's sending me an invite to her. Number one, she doesn't even know who I am, <laughs> you know? So I just want to thank you for that. It meant a lot. And it did a lot for as far as like confidence and just reaffirming like, okay, you're on the right path. So that's good. And yeah. and like literally like me inviting you is because I, I think you're dope. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, and I appreciate you. Like you yeah. are one of the people that's championing what I'm doing. And so it's like, like, why, you know, it's like, I want you to to be a part of like the cool shit that I'm doing. So yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, thank you. Likewise, feeling is mutual. Someone listening to your music for the first time, what are three songs that you'll tell them to start off with? Um, More Than Friends, which is kind of like one of the songs that really like started my career, you know? And I guess Lonely, cause that really like starts to, to show people the, the sound of this project and like the nineties, like, and like more sexy side of myself that I feel like I didn't really show up to this point. And then I would say intimate because it like shows off my voice in a way that I'm like really excited about. Like the end of the song. It's really it's like raw for me. Like that was one where the part at the end where I just am like talking about the things that I struggle with and like the anxieties that I have and how I describe the song is like the first half of the song is sort of the fun, like let's stay up all night. Like let's talk, like let's get super close. Like stay up with me this is so fun and like beautiful whatever and then the second half is like you get so close to someone that all of a sudden you're like wait like don't leave <laughs> like wait like stay up with me like like did I reveal too much like you know if I did like it'll be you know I, I'll get better you know whatever it's like 
the excitement and then like the fear of that. And I think like, like a lot of people maybe feel like that where you, you do get close to someone and then you're afraid of losing them. And then you overthink, you know, things that you said or did or whatever. And so that second half half is just like, when I sang that part, like to stay a little bit longer, it was really like me feeling that way that day. And I was hoping that would translate onto the record and I feel like it did. And um, that just was like a really healing song for me to make. And so I think if you wanna to get to know me even beyond like my voice or my songs, like that song will help you get to know me, I think the most. What's the name of modern artist that you feel is underrated? That deserves mm. more attention. Gene Noble. Oh, yeah, Gene. He goes crazy. His voice is ridiculous. <laughs> like, yeah. like one of the craziest voices I've heard in a minute. Like, he for sure. Who else do I feel like is kind of underrated? I mean, Reggie Becton, I feel like he's like growing and like getting his flowers. And like, um, I know Spotify is like giving him love and I do see him not necessarily like underrated right now, but I'm excited for him to keep blowing up. Cause I just think like as a writer and his songs, like he opened for me on my tour in 2021 and he's been someone who's like, he reached out to me on DM back in like 2020 maybe. And he was just really sweet and nice and was like, you know, I love your music and would you be down to check out my song? It was uh, raining in LA and like, he was just coming up and I was like, you're amazing. Like, keep going. Like you're, you're dope. And then he asked me to feature on one of his songs and I was really into it. So I'm just excited for Reggie to keep like doing his thing. And I think he's on the right path and I think he will get there. Um, so yeah, Gene Noble, Reggie, I'm trying to think of a, like a girl that I feel like is kind of underrated. Honestly, like money long. I met her when she was, under the name, I think she was still Priscilla, Priscilla Renee. Renee. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were both performing at this thing because we were both on Capitol at the time. And I think we both left. I don't think she's still on Capitol, but around the same time too. And I remember like watching her TikToks and like all the music that she was dropping. And like, I feel like initially she wasn't really getting her flowers or like people weren't taking it seriously. Like how amazing of a writer and artist and singer that she is. And so then, you know, when she blew up, it was like, yes, <laughs> you know, like, okay, this is, yeah. this is a success, success story that you love to see. So I feel like when you think that an artist is underrated, they're about to have their glow up moment. Mm -hmm. Cause you yeah, know, I'm like, I'm excited. Do you like him? Yeah, I love him. I went to his concert a couple months ago. Mm. We had a, we had a show out here can't remember. I think it was the Peppermint Club, I believe. Okay. But that album, probably one of my favorite that came out this year. Yeah. And I think he's, yeah, he's real, real dope. Reggie, I'm familiar with him too. And Money Long, mm -hmm. she's yeah. one of my favorite. I actually met her at, randomly at a Victoria Monet concert. Amazing. So I seen her randomly by the bathroom. I was waiting for my girl to come out and she like walks across. I'm like, oh, like, do I say yeah. something? To <laughs> but I'm just like, you know what? This is the year of getting out of my comfort zone and just stop being scared. So when she lets you walk past, I didn't say anything, but I kept thinking about it. I was like, man, I'm gonna be thinking about this forever. And then long story less long, she walked back. I guess God was like, no, nah, we're gonna give you another chance. <laughs> and then I was like, no, nah, I gotta go up to her. And I walked up to her. She had, she had her bodyguard this time, and she just seemed like the sweetest person. And this is another moment that I always remember. And hopefully, I'll meet her one day, and I'll get to tell her this. But hmm. I walked up to her. I was like, "Money long." She like looked back, and she was like, "You know, look very attentive." Like, "Hey," and I was like, "I just want to say I'm a fan of your music. Um, I got an Instagram page, Slow Dance for Life." <laughs> and then she was just like, "Okay." Thank you. Like, and I was, yeah. it was just, that meant a lot to me. So. Yeah. <laughs> it did a lot for my confidence. So she's dope. Yeah. Like, you just want to be noticed. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. I feel like you just want, yeah. Well, I just I wanted to that. give her her flower. Hopefully, she sure remembers that moment in the future. But definitely. She'll right. be on this show. Yeah. Hopefully, we'll put it out there. You know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, what's an unpopular RB opinion that you have? I guess I would say like RB is very much not dead. And I feel like a lot of people feel like that. I never really understand when people say R&B is dead. Like, I, I guess because it's not as much in like the popular culture, maybe like 
on the radio and stuff like it used to be. So I get that. But if the popular opinion is that R&B is dead, I completely disagree with that because everything that I listen to and, you know, everything that's like in the conversation that I'm having with you and other people, it's like, it's so alive. So you know, that, I guess I would say that. I don't know. I don't know if I have any other like unpopular opinion. How do you feel about that as an artist making R&B music when people say that and it's like loud? I see it on my page all the time. Like, how do you feel about when people say that? Like, do you get offended or like? Goes I don't get head? offended. I just get confused. Yeah. <laughs> like I just, I'm like, I don't get it. Like yeah. I literally <laughs> don't get it. <laughs> like there's just no yeah. part of me that understands why people are saying that. Cause yeah. I just, I don't yeah, I hate that. <laughs> I hate that. Also it, every song sounds the same. It's like another one that, that gets on my nerves. It is like, yeah. but you won't say that about the nineties cause they have a bunch of songs that sound similar. But right, right. Like 90s, nobody would talk ever talk bad about the 90s. Right. So. Yeah. It's weird. I feel like so many, I don't know, like maybe it's social media, like people just get on these like negative waves because it's popular or something. I don't know. I don't get it. I just yeah. don't get it. That's all. <laughs> yeah. For this part, I got a few songs written down. I have three songs of yours that I want to ask you about. And you kind of touched on some of them already, but... The first song, this is one of my favorite songs of yours, Crazy to Hope. Yeah, I love that song. Tell me about that song. I wrote that song with um, Carrie Marshall, who's a guitar player who I love. And I, I worked with him a lot. When he lived out here, he lives in Atlanta now, but we used to play like live shows a lot. So we were in the room together. Crazy to Hope was about meeting someone that you kind of just start falling in love. You know, we met one night in the summer I didn't like, I never thought it would last. Um, but now like you're all that I'm thinking about. And so is it crazy to hope that this could be a thing, you know, like even though we only had one night together, like this felt like a dream I had, we were flying, like it was amazing. So is it crazy to hope? And that's kind of the the vibe of the song. And when Masego said he'd hop on it, that was crazy um, because I was working with Louis Elastic who's one of the producers that works with Masego a lot. And for the second verse, I was like, oh, this would be perfect to have a feature. Like, it just feels like one of those songs. It's kind of like a slow jam that was like, I wanted it to feel sexy. And like, I just felt like a, a guy singing on it would be amazing. And Masego felt like an amazing choice. And I actually, I thought he was going to sing on it. And then when it got sent back, it was like saxophone. And I was like, ooh, I love this. Like, I feel like it's really rare to have like a sax solo <laughs> on a song, you know what I mean? When it was like super common, you know, in the 80s and 90s and, you know, probably not the early 2000s really. But um, but so when he sent that back, I was like, oh, I love this. And kind of a funny story about that is I had sent this song to Louis, his producer, and I thought so like I had gotten his part. And we had mixed it and like we were getting ready to release it and I had sent it and like I thought that everything was good to go. Like I thought Masego had heard it like I thought we were good. And then like I think it was like two or three days before we were going to drop the song. Masego's manager hit me up and was like, yo, 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 like we didn't hear this. Like we didn't approve the mix, whatever. And I was like, oh, shit, like. I thought we were good to go. Like I thought all the emails and whatever had gone out and blah, blah, blah. It was probably the most, like, usually it's like not like that. I don't even know why it was like this, but I don't know. But I think maybe the pandemic, like was definitely on me to a certain extent of like, I don't know why I didn't make sure that all the boxes were checked. But anyways, I was like, oh no, like this is coming out in like three days. What am I gonna do? And they were like, okay, Masego just wants to like remix his, sax a little bit like he wants it to sound more like this and so and I hadn't met him at this point it was very like through Louis Elastic and so I got Masego's number and he FaceTimed me and he was so nice and was just like it's cool like we'll figure it out whatever and he stayed up until like two or three in the morning with me and my mixing engineer so that we could get it done in time for the release 
And like, he had never met me. Like he had no clue at the end of the day, like who I was. And he did that, which I was like, that's so cool. <laughs> like yeah. he could have easily been like, take it off the song. Like you got to pause the release, whatever. Yeah. And he stayed up and got it right. And then he sent me like a video, you know, he was like on a skateboard <laughs> and he was like sending me a video. Like, I hope everything goes well with your release. Like, thanks for having me on it. And I was like super up and coming at that point. And it just really was cool to me that he did that and was willing to keep the release going and like be on the song and have his name on the song. And so that's probably the coolest story about that song was just how it almost didn't come out. And then he helped make sure that it did. That's dope. I, li yeah. I like when people are just genuine and they just go out of the kindness of their heart and just go above and beyond. And I like that because oftentimes you get people that they're not trying to help you out or they'll, they'll be a dick about certain shit. Yeah. yeah so. And he like, I feel like he got like artist to artist. I feel like he was like, I can imagine how you feel right now. <laughs> like you're probably freaking out. Mm -hmm. And uh, just, I feel like he's been there type energy. And so, so that was just like, yeah, it was just, yeah. The fact that he wasn't a dick, he was awesome, was yeah. incredible. Yeah. yeah, I love. Well, I love that song. That's one of my favorites. I feel like I could say this about a lot of your songs, <laughs> but the next one, "Time on Me," mm -hmm. another favorite of mine. Yes, I love one. the the songs you're pulling up from. How did we get here? I love that project. Yeah. Like, I felt like I don't know. Like, certain people, even on my team, were like, "Eh, that project like wasn't it." I was like, "Yes, it is. I love Time on Me." Like. So that song is actually about, that was kind of about my label at the time where I was just like, you know, you don't even know what you have. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. if you're not going to spend your time on me, like, I'm I'm going to walk away type shit. Like, or like, but yeah, like, go ahead and walk away. I don't have time to play. Like, and you don't really got it like that. Most of the songs that are about things other than love, yeah. I turn it into a love song just because it's. It's the way I like to write, but it's also more like relatable versus like, I don't want to go to the meeting that you set yeah. up and whatever. But that was like, um, I'm trying to remember how the first, the first verse goes. Uh, um, it's funny. I haven't sung that song in a while. I didn't even have that song in my set really. Cause it kind of was one no. that fell through the cracks. Like, hmm. but I love that song. I'm glad you brought that up. Like yeah, one of my favorite spend projects. Time. Yeah, I love it. Yes, you can spend your time, spend it on me. I think I posted yeah. it on my page too when I when I did the post. That was one of the songs I included in there. Yeah. Yay! Yeah. yeah, that's one of my favorites. I'm so glad you're bringing these up because mm -hmm. th that project, I love that project. These questions be for me because I'd be wanting to know about certain songs and stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, so we'll ask you about some of your newer stuff now. You kind of briefly talked about it, but "Intimate" is your latest single. Yeah, I guess whatever you want to say about that song that you didn't already say? Um, I think I said it probably already in that like earlier part when we talked about it, but just, mm. yeah, just like, yeah, yeah. And, vulnerable. Yeah, it, yeah. and was kinda, it about somebody in specifically or? I would say like about my husband in a way, like he's so amazing. I'm so blessed to have this amazing love in my life. And he never makes me feel like, he's going to leave. But I get so insecure sometimes about like the things that I struggle with. And sometimes I feel this like guilt kind of like, oh, am I like putting too much on you? Or like, does, does my like emotional side get like overwhelming or something? And I think that part of the song was sort of me being like, don't leave, but he never would. Like for him, he's always like, I love you no matter what. And that's actually, there's a song called Awake on the project that's like about how when I go into places of like, you know, anxiety or like depression or whatever, like I feel like I'm sort of asleep kind of. And like every time I wake up from that, he's there. Like you're there when I'm awake, you know, like you're always there through the trials. And so in Intimate, I reference Awake like a little bit longer. I'm wide awake. I swear I'll try to be stronger, but my mind wins the race. And so awake is kind of this reference of like, I'm here now, like I am awake. But like sometimes, you know, my mind gets very anxious and whatever. So I kind of like that it has like a reference to another song on the project. And there's actually a lot of songs that have, like you'll hear like 
titles of one song as a lyric in another song. And that's something that was kind of fun to me to like weave the project together by referencing other songs within other songs. Yeah. Real quick, did you get that from Mariah Carey? I know you're big uh, Mariah oh, Carey. Fan. She does I, that a lot. Did, did she do that? Oh my God, well, I love that. She does that in a few of her songs. Like she'll mention like the title of projects. It's one song she does it. Um, I can't think of it. But she does it. Um, if, I, if I think of it, I'll send it to you. Okay. But, uh, I'll look that up. I didn't even know that, but I love yeah. that. She's okay. like my my idol. <laughs> so for this part is a real quick round. I'm going to give you two options, and then you just tell me which, which one you like better. Call okay. this or that round. Okay. okay. Um, well, I feel like I know where you're going with this one. But <laughs> Whitney Houston or Mariah Carey? Mm, I guess Mariah. But, you know, how can you choose but but mariah carey was the the one that i listened to when i was younger who like i learned singing from like and then winnie houston you know was everything but for some reason i didn't get introduced to her as quickly as i did mariah carey i don't know why but you can't really choose let me just say that but yeah. if i had to mariah yeah well i mean i could choose i i just love mariah carey more like yeah, i know Whitney. Yeah. Yeah, Whitney's the voice, but I've just always been drawn to Mariah Carey. Like her songs, like most of her songs, I love. So, vision but, of love, emotions, my all. Yeah, 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 yeah. For yeah, sure. so, same. Justin Timberlake or Justin Bieber? Oh, um, hmm, that's I've never heard that before. I no, never. I would have. I would say Justin Timberlake, like normally, but like lately, I don't know. Justin Bieber's kind of been, been pulling right. it through a little bit. Like I kind of like where Justin Bieber's at right now, but I'd say, I'd say Justin Timberlake. Okay. At the okay. end of the day. Okay. Last one. Boys to men or Drew Hill. Mm, boys to men. <laughs> I was like, I should, I should have set you that, but okay. Yeah. Are you a Drew Hill fan at all? Or do you just like boys of Drew Hill? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. 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 Okay. But I didn't listen that much like boys to men. Yeah. They were just, I just love them. I don't know. I like, I think, um, I like tweeted at them once and they like hearted it or something. And I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. but yeah, I'd say boys to men. As yeah. I feel like I've been like talking about them so much on this and, nah, they and, deserve, Reba and stuff. But they deserve their flowers. So yeah. I mean, I love boys to men too. Well, that concludes my little interview session with this love and RB. And I just want to say I had fun. I enjoyed interviewing you, just talking RB with you. Thank you again for doing this. At this time, I'd like to give you the opportunity, anything you want to promote or talk about, drop some gems. The floor is yours now. I think I, I think I said everything I wanted to say. I guess just get ready for my album. It's coming out in September. I don't want to drop the date just yet because I want to make sure that we're like locked on that date. But September and then I'm going to be announcing a tour in a couple weeks. So that'll be, Ooh. yeah. Uh, you, well, I'm assuming you're coming out here, right, LA? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Cool. We're, it's like East Coast, and then we're going to come out and do an LA show. Um, yeah. But yeah, that'll be in November. So just listen to the project, come to the tour. And uh, yeah, thanks everyone for the support. And thank you, especially. Yeah, for sure. And I'm definitely going to be at the tour. So whenever yeah. it's announced, I'll, I'll you know get my tickets. Um, so yeah, so now this, this is like the sign-off part where I sign off in my... So dance for life way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sign off, and then after that I'm gonna need you to sign off in kind of similar fashion, but your own way. But you okay. have to say you have to use the the catchphrase that I use, which is Wizzy Wow. If you're not familiar with the Wizzy Wow, <laughs> do you know why I say Wizzy Wow? Like, I don't. No. Well, Wizzy Wow is an actual song by Black Street. Okay. Yeah. The song wasn't that great, but I made it a mission to get justice for Wizzy Wow. So I use I it. I love that. Yeah, I use it pretty frequently, like in the comments and on the page. So, anywho, I say all that to say this is Slow Jams for Life signing off. Wizzy Wow. Wizzy Wow. Wizzy, Wizzy Wow. wow. <laughs>